Hi, I'm Dustin with Overworked Logic. In this video, I'm going to show Crestron programmers how you can do basic IP control of an NEC projector. I'm also going to show you how you can calculate simple checksums in Microsoft Excel, and I'm going to introduce you to a utility called Netcat to simulate a TCP connection. The first thing that I want to mention is that the example code is available for download at the link below this video. Now, the first thing that I did was I went and looked for an NEC projector command reference manual. It was a little bit tricky to find, but I found one that talked about IP control. Now, I should note that this isn't specific to all models, and there are other ways to do IP connections. There's something called Crestron Connected Displays. That works relatively well in a lot of cases. I wanted to do this video as an example of how to control a device with a TCP connection. So in this manual here, down here where it talks about the LAN connection, it says we must use TCP port number 4172 for sending and receiving commands. And then it gives us a command list. Then it shows us how to calculate the checksum. And then we can get further to see the actual commands. An example command is here. So let's jump over to simple. In the configuration view, I added a TCP IP client. And now that can be found under Ethernet control modules, Ethernet intersystem device communication, and right here. Or my preference is to just double click on the Ethernet devices. And you can choose from a context sensitive menu of what's available. You can just press T to get to the T's and TCP client, you can add it that way. When you're on that, you wanna right click and do configure. This is where we set the IP address of the device. In this case, it's the IP address of my computer because I'm going to simulate the projector. That's all we need to do on the configure view. Let's head over to the program view. So if I open up the symbol here, there's a parameter of the port. That's that 7142 that we talked about over here, 7142. I've got the connect feedback and the status in there, but commented out just so we can watch and debugger. The RX we're not really using. You can see that's green, it's not going anywhere. We've got a TX, I'm feeding that from a serial IO. I'll show you that in a second. And in this example program, my connect is going to be one. So the moment the program starts, it's going to try to connect and it will keep trying to connect. There's other ways to manage TCP connections, but for basic devices, this is a good way to get you started. Under the logic, I just have one symbol in this case, the serial IO, which is going to generate my serial commands from digital presses. So I have two digital presses, projector power on, projector power off. I don't even have a touch panel here. I'm just going to trigger those in debugger. And then I've got a hexadecimal string for on and off. I'll show you how to calculate that when we talk about the checksums in a second. The TX here, I can press F3 to highlight the root. It goes right to my TCP client. So now let's look at how I actually calculated these checksums. I wanna make an important note here that not every checksum is calculated the same way. This is specific to this protocol. And what they're saying here is add all the data preceding the checksum. So all these bytes, and then use the low order byte or the right side of this zero, 103. So just 03 hex as your checksum. So this total command here would be 20810160010. And then the checksum of 03. And those will be in hexadecimal. So in Crestron land, it'll be backslash x20, backslash x81, backslash x01, etc. I created an Excel spreadsheet that calculates the hexadecimal checksum for this NEC protocol. What you do is in the green here, you put in your data bytes. So we put in 20. You see there, 20, 81, 01, 60, 01, 00. And it's formatting the 0x, it's adding that on. What it's doing is converting it to decimal. It's adding the decimals, so it ends up with 259, and it converts that to hex. So it basically subtracts the high byte, and then you get 03 as the result, which is what they came up with in this example here. So now we can use this and look at the actual command. We just have to find it here, power on. So this is 0, 02, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 02. And that has a checksum of 0, 04. So if you look at my simple program, that's what I've got for power on. 0, 02, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. Let's see, there's 1, 2, 3, 4 zeros. 1, 2, 3, 4 zeros. 0, 02 and then 0, 04 as a checksum. So that's how I calculated what that should be. I did the same thing for power off. So now that I've loaded it, the TCP status is actually 1D. And if you look in here at what that means, we could just press F1 for the help. And it gives a little bit of debugging information. It says waiting for connection. So it hasn't been able to connect. It hasn't failed. It's just, it's trying to connect and there's nothing there. 
And that's because the IP address, like I said, is the IP address of my laptop and I'm not actually running anything to connect to it. So even though the connection isn't there, it will generate the strings, it will try to send them out, but it will basically not do anything. Now let's look at how I can create a test server on my laptop so I can connect to this and demonstrate it. If you go to nmap.org slash download.html, I'll put this link below, you can download this little utility called nmap. When you install it, you basically wanna keep the default settings of everything checked, and then it will work properly when you start it up. And what we're doing with this program is we're just creating a TCP server using the NCAT utility that's packaged with this. I tried to find a direct NCAT utility, but there's a lot of virus blockers because it acts like a server, so it won't let you download stuff. So this utility NMAP seemed to be the best way to do it. One quick little note, this type of testing is potentially problematic for security reasons. So you don't want to be running servers and stuff like that as a regular practice. We're just doing this for testing purposes. Once it's installed, you can open up a command prompt. First thing you want to type is ipconfig. You can find this other ways, but I wanted to see what my address is. I already knew that it was 32. So now what we want to do is type ncat minus v for verbose minus minus listen, which creates a server and then my IP address of my laptop. So this is the interface that it's listening on. And then the port number, which is 7142. And hit enter. And this server is running as long as this little utility is running here. So it took about 10 seconds, but then my simple program connected because that connect is held high. So it's always trying to reconnect. So now we've got our connect feedback is high. The status is two, which I already know means connected. And I can start sending my signals. Now you'll notice this is unprintable characters, all that hexadecimal stuff. You won't see the actual proper commands, but you'll see that there's a response. And for this test, that's probably good enough. The other thing that you could do, double click on there and put an actual string in here, and you'll see that come out the other end, test. And likewise, we could click here and type okay and hit enter, and then we'll see that on the Rx. Now, if we actually wanted to see the hexadecimal data, we could do the same command and just put minus minus hex dash dump and then give it a file name, test.txt. This will do the exact same thing, except it's writing out in hex stuff that's received. I'll clear the trace and I'm going to send on. Then I'm going to send an ff just kind of as a separator, and then I will send off. We'll close that out, and then I'm just going to view the test file. So here you can see 02000000004, that's the on, that ff is the one that I sent, and then here is the off command. Now you don't really have to do this very often, with netcat, with the hex dump and stuff like that, because you already know what you're sending, but I just wanted to demonstrate kind of the powerful things you could do with this without having to install a, a bunch of software. There's other ways to do this, but this I think is the simplest, even though it involves a little bit of command line stuff. It's more for debugging and troubleshooting issues where things aren't working properly. The last thing I wanna note, because I don't wanna lead anybody the wrong way, there are other ways to manage TCP connections and probably a more comprehensive method is to connect send a command, then disconnect. That's kind of how TCP IP is supposed to work. In AV applications, we kind of get away with holding connect high and keeping connections open. I know devices like Extron, switchers, and other types of devices that rely on simple IP control allow that port to be open all the time. And so I just wanted to show a method that's pretty simplistic. It's not using SSL or any encryption. It's just kind of a raw TCP connection and it connects out to the device and sends some data. Hopefully this video gave you some good tips. Please like it here on YouTube and subscribe to the channel. If you have anything that you would like to see in future videos, please comment below. I read all the comments and I love to hear your feedback. Thanks and we'll see you in the next video.